So that's the dream that people are looking at. That's what it's about. Uh, NEC came up with nano horns. These are carbon nano horn based batteries. And in that case, instead of having uh, graphite like uh, materials, they created horns. So concentric horns that allowed you to have layers of hydrogen sticking in there. And Mercedes do have a uh, car that has a hydrogen cylinder in the back. I wouldn't want to follow that because if you do knock it, you might end up in space. I'm sure they have safety sorted out. Another area that nanotechnology is extremely important in the energy issue is supercapacitors. And if you want to make supercapacitors, currently the material that is used mostly is activated carbon. These are carbons that are heated up to about uh, 13 to 1500 degrees in super uh, saturated environments of uh, water and that creates these nanopores that allow you to have surface areas that are of the order of 3000 square meters per gram of material. Once you take these materials and you put it into a standard capacitor cell, you have all of this extra surface area that cr is created and that allows you to have much, much better storage. The same concept is being used in the case of carbon nanotube. And in carbon nanotubes, instead of having this space that is laterally placed, you're talking about vertically placed areas to have cells. And, and this sort of thing is being used in uh, zero emission cars and, and, and looking at producing electric vehicles. There is the whole area of reverse osmosis, and this is very important too. The image that you have in the poster uh, that, that invited you to this public lecture was based on water molecules traveling in a carbon nanotube. Effectively, theoretically, it was shown that if you have water molecules traveling inside a carbon nanotube, the hydrogen that sits next to the oxygen normally has an uh, angle of about 160 degrees and it's sitting there. When it goes through the carbon, these, those two hydrogens come close together. And what happens, it, it creates a super frictionless surface. And when it creates that super frictionless surface, this transport is about uh, 10,000 times faster in these nanotubes than if it was just a hole. So it becomes a super frictionless surface. So within our institute, we've also done modeling associated with this, but we were beaten by about a year by Holt et al really because they did some very, very good theoretical work. And to follow this, there is experimental work also that has been reported in science that shows experimentally this is possible. People have then used uh, the ingenuity of ion channels that are found in humans and other biological materials and shown that you can then start putting uh, surface states that reject ions within those materials and thereby you can then start thinking of fresh water, salt water, a membrane. The fresh water tries to go into the salt water. This area is confined, fixed volume. As the, salt, as the fresh water tries to go into the salt water, it creates pressure and that pressure can be used to drive a turbine. So again, a route of producing energy. Scandinavian companies are already trying to produce uh, systems that can do up to uh, two to five megawatt energies using this process. There is the whole area of wind that I didn't talk about. Wind is one of the fastest growing areas. And again, in terms of the blade structures, there's a lot of uh, nanotechnology going not only to strengthen those blades, but it's also going in the flow by creating nanonodules on the surfaces that allow the flow to be better across it. Typically, if you take a Boeing 747 wing, if you look very closely at the edges of the tips, you actually have a laser that creates small nano holes on, through the material in order to get the right airflow across the surface of things. So there's a lot of engineering that goes around that is based on nanotechnology that we do not actually uh, utilize or, or take for granted that this technology is going in there. The whole area of marine engineering, there's a lot of modeling that goes and uh, systems that create these structures 
that allow you to have control over things. So all of this is technology being used to solve a huge problem that we are facing. Now, my conclusions, I've got two sets of conclusions really, is scientists, people can contribute hugely in using green technology solutions and, and getting good solutions that can help world problems. We need to look at it from a life cycle analysis point of view. And nanotechnology can happen anywhere, can happen anytime. So we need revolutionary people, revolutionary ideas coming through, using these beautiful toys that people have to manipulate things, to make devices, surfaces, structures that are better. So really, um, the, the, the future is really up to you. It, it's, it's, the future is as big as your imagination. Einstein famously said that he believes uh, uh, imagination is more important than knowledge simply because knowledge has finite bounds, whereas imagination does not have finite bounds. Now, in my view of things, we, we need to start thinking about this earth and how the interaction of earth, land, water and air takes place with the environment and how do we make this a safer place for humanity. I think nanotechnology is a key in making this a safer place. I also think that by contributing through nanotechnology with green energy solutions to this problem, we can certainly make this a happier place. So thank you for your attention. <laughs>